Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for a series of messages on the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the temptation of Jesus. As we follow the life that Jesus modeled, it is my desire that we find ourselves in the stories of Jesus. We need what Jesus needed so we can do what he said we can do. Last week, we joined the crowd on the banks of the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized by John. We learned from Jesus how to walk in the power of the Spirit and the favor of God. We learned that the Spirit of God is in us to deepen our intimacy with the Father, but the Spirit is upon us to minister in power to the people we meet in the course of life. We discovered ourselves in the baptism of Jesus when we asked this question. If Jesus needed to hear the voice of his father saying, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, then how much more do we need to hear words of affirmation from our heavenly father as well? I declare over you, you are well loved by your heavenly father. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 1 we read, after Jesus was baptized, that being full of the Holy Spirit, he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Our focus today is the temptation of Jesus and what he modeled for us to follow. It is important to note that Satan did not lead Jesus into the desert. The Spirit led him into the desert. The Spirit of God will never lead you into a battle that you are not equipped to win. Whatever sp spiritual battle you are facing, you are equipped to win it. However, Satan was taken into a battle that he was not equipped to win. Of course, he did his best to defeat Jesus, but he failed. Satan is not equipped to defeat you either, but just like he tried to defeat Jesus, Satan will do his best to try to defeat you. The strategy that Satan used against Jesus is the same strategy he used against Adam and Eve. Did God say? His goal is to talk us into doubting the goodness of God by asking his favorite question, did God say? Luke tells us in Luke chapter 4 and verse 2, that Jesus was in the desert for 40 days being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Words from the Lord will always attract a challenge from the devil. The strength of your word from God is measured by the magnitude of the attack against that word. If you're holding on to a promise from God, you can be sure that Satan will attack that promise. In the case of Jesus, Satan attacked the words, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Satan began by trying to get Jesus to question his identity as a well-loved child of God. And that is what Satan will do to you as well. He wants you to doubt your identity and doubt that God will provide what you need to reach your purpose and calling in life. He wants you to doubt that God will provide for your needs. Listen to what the devil said to Jesus. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread, Luke chapter 4 and verse 3. This is Satan's basic question. If God loves you, why are your needs for food and clothing not being met. I'm living proof that you can trust God to provide for you. I've lived by faith for more than 10 years, and God has provided for my needs. Jesus answered the devil by saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. Jesus turned this attack back on Satan by saying to his followers in John chapter 6 and verse 35, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. When we are in a spiritual battle, we don't need physical food. We need spiritual food. Jesus is the spiritual food we need to win the battle 
over doubting Father's provision for our life. Next, the devil tried to get Jesus to question Father's plan for his life. In Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we read, Then the devil took Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. I invite you to remember the words that Jesus said at the giving of the Great Commission. Do you recall that he said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me? So if Jesus has all authority, then someone else has no authority. How can the devil function if he has no authority? He can only function by stealing authority from those who have it. He talks until someone believes what he says. And when you agree with a lie, you empower the liar. Satan's plan has always been to avoid suffering and pain. In the case of Jesus, he offered him the kingdoms of this world without the cross. And Jesus answered him by saying, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve, Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. Satan is always ready to off offer people a shortcut to success in life. But that shortcut leads people into a pit of defeat and despair. Finally, Satan tried to lure Jesus into risky behavior by offering him false protection. He took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Luke chapter 4, 9 through 13. Now the pinnacle of the temple was more than 100 feet or 30 meters high. Jumping off of that place was a suicide leap for sure. Now I believe someone is listening to me right now who is struggling with suicidal thoughts. You're hearing a voice within you that's saying, jump, it'll all be better, but it's all a lie. Your life is so hard, you can't see any other choice. But Jesus is right next to you, right now. Turn to him and trust him. He has a good plan for your life. Come under his protection and be blessed. One of my sons-in-laws was tricked by the devil into jumping off of a bridge. His body was never found. I plead with you today, choose life, renounce death, trust Jesus. Tell Satan what Jesus told him. It is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test, Luke chapter 4 and verse 12. And with these words, Satan gave up on testing Jesus. You too can have Satan give up on you. Luke tells us that Jesus came out of the desert and returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and the report about him went throughout all the surrounding country. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. I invite you to come out of your desert in the provision of the Holy Spirit. To go forward with the plan of the Holy Spirit. And to stand on your words by the protection of the Holy Spirit. Shake off the dust of your garment and follow our beautiful Savior. You can trust Father's provision you can trust Father's plan, and you can trust Father's protection. Let's take a few moments and talk to him about this powerful message. Father, we thank you that Jesus showed us how to walk in our identity and not doubt our identity in you. Whatever words you have received from the Lord, sometimes referred to as rhema words, where you've heard the voice of God speak to you, hold on to those words because Satan is going to challenge them but you can overcome his challenge. You can trust God to provide for your every needs. You can trust God for the plan that he has for your life. The plan may be delayed in your eyes, but it is not delayed in the eyes of the Father. He knows 
He knows when it's the right time for his plan to come into the fullness of your time and your life. You can trust God for protection. No matter whatever is coming against you, you can trust the Lord uh, to protect you. And if we uh, have someone in your family who, uh, who committed suicide and lost their life, and, and you're mourning the loss of that person right now, just speak the comfort of the Holy Spirit upon you. He is a good God. He knows your pain, and he knows what happened. And I want to encourage you today. Whatever desert you are in, remember Jesus was led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. If you're in a desert, it's not because Satan has lured you there. It is because you were led there by the Spirit of God. He knows where you are and what you are facing. You went in by his power, and you can come out with even more power. I release the power of God so that his name will be spread abroad through your life uh, because you have trusted him to provide, to protect, and for the plan that he has for your life. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.